Hi, Ben. So this is Canadian Tea Season 4, Episode 7 with Thomas Quinn. Hello. What's up, Welcome. homie? What's Welcome. up? How are you guys How doing? Are... I'm good. How are you? I'm good. A little tired. I'm at the end of my semester, but... For real? Surviving. Finals probably kicking your ass, yeah? Not yet. Uh, yeah, Not yet? Just, uh, yeah, just my semester is about to end in a few days and uh, just okay. uh, finished my internship doing stuff like that, so yeah. Oh yeah, dude! You had an internship with um, City Montreal, right? City News Montreal. Uh, City News Montreal, yeah. That's dope. That's dope. How did that kind of? How was that opportunity? It was a lot of fun. How did like? Did you just like apply or like? Yeah, yeah, I had to apply through my school, and I got like credits for it. Okay, cool. Love that. Did you like? I don't even know. That's so. That's super dope. Honestly. Yeah, it was cool. Like, it was a really cool experience. I got to learn a lot. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. So, like, you're, you know, journalist slash rapper, you know, photographer, a lot of things. Pretty dope. Um, how yeah, did you I think get... I'm, like, journalist primary. Cool, cool, cool. Like, okay. Yeah, how did you get into that? Stuff was more of, like, a passion project for the time okay. being. But yeah. How did you get into journalism? Like, when did you know you wanted to kind of pursue that? Uh, well, I was always into, like, documentaries. Okay. And uh, it was always something that I thought was kind of like uh, not a realistic option. But then I kind of was like, why not just go for it? You know? Why not realistic? <laughs> I don't know. Just because it's, uh, well, it's hard to be like super successful in the field. Let's say only a few people are like uh, most things where you're like being a content creator. That's fair um I guess it depends on the style like if you want to do like a freelance or work for like actual yeah exactly like, like there's a yeah like uh basically you're always stuck between uh working for like mainstream like legacy media or doing uh you know uh where you guys where you would be paying paid more versus like independent work where you kind of be grinding it out for a while and uh not making much money and so like you know, hopefully some payday that you're kind of hoping for. Yeah, I feel that for sure. I did like uh, a field trip to like CTV News Montreal one time and I was like, this is like <laughs> insane. And like, uh, yeah. Um, and then I was like asking Lori Graham, like, oh, how did you get the job here? She's like, I don't really know. Like someone, like I knew someone that worked here and like they had an opening and I was like, oh, and then she's like, yeah, it just worked really hard in here. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, but yeah, like, no, I get that for sure. I just, I don't know. Journalism's like, like anything, like it's, you know, the grind, but uh, I don't know. I think like you have a unique writing style, obviously. Um, I think um, a lot of what bit, journalism is kind of like the business of like raising awareness. So it's kind of like trying to have like a more unique perspective and not just trying to like parrot what everyone else is saying because uh, people like appreciate when you're uh, in this field, at least when you like come at something with a new angle or you try to point out something that they hadn't seen before. Yeah, that's Definitely. totally fair. That's totally fair. Um, like if you're, yeah, because most, he I guess I would say like a lot of headlines are fairly similar slash, like it's like when you, when you learn like, you know, how to write an article at first, it's like the basic, you know, who, what, when, where, why kind of thing. And like, you know, the, the actual, like when you break it down, like that outline, how to write it, but it's like, if you could actually put your own spin on it, as opposed to like be, I guess, basic. So no, I definitely yeah, I get think that. a lot of like the choice that people make is like what they choose not to say as opposed to what they do say. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, you're at Concordia, right? That's super cool. Why did you um, choose that school, I guess, in particular? Well, uh, in, in like McGill doesn't have a journalism program. And to be honest, like when I applied to the Concordia journalism program, like I really didn't think that it was possible that I would even get in and then I did and then I was like oh wow this is a cool like opportunity I should really take this opportunity and uh I don't know it just was like such a perfect fit really <clears throat> no, I for get like that. Uh, my sensibilities and like my interests and stuff yeah mm -hmm. for sure honestly like it's kind of 
I get because I I did the uh, it was like my third um option when applying to university and like you have your portfolio but then there's also like the exam and then like the letter of intent it's like a lot of you know it is fairly hard to get in so I get that but um that's dope so you've been there a couple years like how much time do you have left I think I only have like one semester left of the journalism courses but I, okay. I have like uh still have like a few classes to do for my minor so okay. I'm gonna have to stick here I'm doing cardio what's for your minor yeah uh, professional writing so oh, it's okay, like pretty similar yeah so like, yeah it's just uh less like news oriented it could be like PR releases and like other kinds of like professional writing like sick yeah. yeah so you want to like kind of stay in Montreal and do that or you want to travel uh, honestly no uh, yeah I, I would love to travel and like do a bunch of stuff I'd like to work in different places and uh you know um when I was a kid I well not you know not a kid but maybe like say like 10 years ago when I was like 15 16 I discovered uh, Vice as like a media platform and I was always like really interested in the like mini documentaries that they have on their YouTube channel I think that's like some of the best stuff where it's like there's like 20 minute documentaries where it's not like so long that you kind of get like uh into tangents or like details that like you may not be super interested in it's just like short sweet tell a story and uh I always I thought that that was really cool so like um I've always like uh and also like Vice has like a bunch of offices all over the world. Like uh, that would be interesting to like work around or be near or cover different stories. Or... That's always a thought, but uh, honestly, like I'm super open to anything and uh, I, I'll like take any good opportunity that comes my way to be honest. So yeah, yeah no, I, I do like those documentaries as well. They're actually like, fun. and I liked like the whole, like um, they did like, with the I guess like food shows like I love Maddie Madison oh, yeah. and like I discovered him through Vice oh yeah so. <laughs> Maddie Madison. yeah, I, yeah like he's sick. I actually love that guy so I have his cookbooks I love him I'm obsessed with him my friend uh, my brother got me one and my friend actually met him and got like a signed one for me and I'm obsessed he's so fucking funny dude he's cool uh, I, I saw him on the Tiger Belly mm-hmm. the like Bobby Lee podcast he was like yeah. really funny yeah <laughs> yeah I just love when he like there's this one I think it was like his own video on YouTube and he's like making lemon meringue pie and he's like shooting from his like tiny ass like uh, apartment in Toronto this was like I don't even know how many years ago and he's like yeah like you know when you um get on the subway and you're like going to work and like a hobo just pisses on you and like you're having a really bad day like here's this oh, recipe for lemon meringue pie it'll make your day better when you get pissed on by a hobo it's like what the fuck dude <laughs> Like, I don't know the shit he says. It's fucking hysterical. But yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah uh, dope. Yeah. So you would like traveling for sure. Um, I guess what would your dream kind of job slash story be? Um, in an ideal world. That would like, uh, that would change all the time. Like right now, I wish I was in the uh, courtroom for the uh, Ghislaine Maxwell trial. That would mm-hmm. be probably like uh, most ideal for me, and just because I find it's like probably the biggest story of the like last decade. Okay, maybe, yeah, like, for in sure. In terms of like the crossover between politics and entertainment, and like uh, like all the different like uh, crossroads of that story, of the things that it's inter like you know we're talking like past presidents were involved, we're talking actors musicians like all kinds of crazy stuff so whatever ramifications of that I think it would be cool to be doing that but also like uh, honestly I think that uh, a lot of journalism is kind of just like improvised and uh, like um, a lot of great stuff is just kind of like will just happen and you were just lucky enough to be there to capture it so uh it's uh for me to even like predict something that i would be interested to go and cover like maybe like music festivals and stuff but other than that like uh and it's not even let's say i wouldn't even take it as like the traditional angle of like going to like interview artists and asking them about their music and stuff like i feel like that's super overdone as well yeah i I would try to find like a unique way of covering uh whatever something like an event like that or like cultural uh 
things like that. Like, uh, it would just be also like a cool way for me to uh, go to all the different music festivals I've always wanted to go to around the world. Because uh, there's, a, there's a lot that I've, uh, like there's the uh, California Reggae Roots Festival that I've always wanted to go to. It's like um, all the different like California, like all alternative like punk rock, like reggae, ska band type things. Like kind of like sublime, like okay. that whole kind of like genre of music. It's and it's like three days and it's like on the, the beach, I believe, in California. I could be wrong. But yeah, so that sounds like is it would be super fun. And also just going to uh some like uh I, I can't remember its name, but there's also like a side trance festival that happens in Spain, I believe. That was really cool and just things like that, like different arts festivals and uh let's say like Alex Gray, the artist from uh, Tool. He uh, yeah. designed it, like album art for Tool. He also has this uh, church called the, the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors. And I, I really want to visit that and like somehow incorporate that into my journalism one day. So maybe that that's a good example. Like he invented a, like a religion or is it just like a place? Oh no, it's just a place. Yeah, he's not okay. like a religious guy. Yeah, he just... Okay. Uh, he makes really trippy art and it's like inspired by uh when because he, he like is really into dmt okay and uh yeah so he does like this really insanely trippy art that's super detailed and it's like also like anatomically and that anatomically perfect so it's okay. like sometimes it'll look like a scientific like like uh like a the insides of a human being and stuff like it's very interesting and uh it's really worth checking out. He's a, like a visionary artist. And uh, so basically he created like this, um, this like walk in, it's like a museum of his art, but then the building itself is supposed to be art. Okay. So, yeah, it's really, it's very trippy. Like. That sounds super interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, I had no idea. Like, I, I mean, I'm not the, gonna say that I'm a huge like, huge fan of tool like i know their music but yeah i'm I not no fucking clue either. yeah that's sick I just like this artist um dope um cool, cool cool so you're like you said like your music's kind of a passion project um and that's i don't know it's just like it's super i feel like different from like the mainstream kind of rap and yeah. everything um and yeah. i guess um we just wanted like how did that come to be like you started writing bars and then you're like oh let's actually like put some content out there and like well uh yeah I um well it started off like just for fun I used to just like freestyle rap with my friend Quincy we used to live together at Bishops and uh I never like took it seriously really until I left Bishops because like uh, uh or like I took a, a little yeah no I guess around the time I left Bishops was when I started to like take it a little bit more seriously because like we started doing shows in Montreal and we had like a little bit of a following and we started getting like some random gigs and it was cool like uh before the pandemic like things were like on an ascension in terms of like public interest I would say but like nothing really significant but like just you know more than nothing and uh in terms of like uh, me like developing my own sound or like what it is I wanted to do as a rapper I uh, really was into uh, artists like um, there's this guy Evil Pimp who's like a huge influence on my music and if you listen to his music it would be like obvious that you uh, that I uh, like this guy a lot and also like uh, just uh, I want to be I like the area of music that I thought that I wanted to be like a part like that I would have liked to have been a part of would have been like underground like rap uh in terms of like um like alternative type stuff like uh where it's like influenced by like heavy metal so like there's like City Morgue or Ghost Main and Suicide Boys and people like that yeah. where it's kind of like hard and like edgy like rap music basically I just like aggressive rap music for the most part okay. yeah for sure I was just uh because I was listening to it earlier today but do you know the song um Miami Ultra by Young Lean yeah yeah I love like Young Lean actually I uh <laughs> yeah 
I used to, I actually uh, downloaded a bunch of the beats that he used when I was, he used to freestyle back in the day. Just because I love those like cloud rap beats. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think he's like super underrated, um, especially in Montreal. I mean, not some, I, I went to his show and like at, uh, Metro or M tell us now I'll always call it metropolis but whatever um <laughs> and like it was pretty like I don't know if it was sold out but like yeah I don't know like he he got a bigger name for himself but people don't realize the impact that he had you know and like paving the way for other SoundCloud rappers and like I don't know well, his yeah, shit he now was like so. he was like the OG of like internet rappers right but yeah because like for the most part before that there's like a lot of gatekeepers and like even if you like blew up on YouTube it was like because of a label or because of your association with someone who was already like recognized in like hip-hop so I think that Young Lean just being some random kid and being successful yeah. on YouTube was like a huge deal because it would kind of like gave a lot of people hope. For and, sure. uh, I think Young Lean too is just like a creative guy his music videos are really cool like still to this day his music video, like a lot of the like original videos that he dropped that like got really popular and what blew them up. Like if you go back and you look at that, like the videos are still really cool. Like, uh, of course his raps could be better, but you know, he got better over time. And when I hear his recent stuff, like I usually don't listen to it twice, but like I'll check it out like one time and I'm like, oh, cool. Like I'll check out his new projects or whatever. Yeah, he kind of always changes it up. It's like super interesting um, and like it's a whole different like he obviously like he's from Sweden so it's like kind of like a edgier like weird you know like he, like you said his videos like there's one where he's like in a dress like you know digging up like a grave like it it doesn't really make sense but like it's it's interesting um and he's very intellectual if I'm I'm like a fan of watching like interviews with like artists celebrities whatever just to see how they are a little bit like how they carry themselves in real life compared to like who they portray or like who they are as like a an artist on stage or whatever and like he's super like well-spoken and intellectual a little bit which is weird I mean I have to is check it? that out because I haven't seen many <laughs> interviews with him I don't think uh, but he's like uh that that sounds pretty dope though yeah uh but yeah you mentioned you went to Bishop's that's yeah. chill. Bella's actually from there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from but... Sherbrooke, yeah. yeah. Shout out, Sherbrooke. Uh, but yeah, dope. Um, okay, so you studied. Oh, so Sorry. go ahead. I think you, you were going to ask the same question as me, but what did you study at uh, the Bishop before you went to Concordia? Well, I was studying to be a teacher, and then um, I was like, I just didn't really know what to do um, in terms of like, uh, like what I wanted to do in life, like overall. And uh, I went to Bishops, I got into the education program and I knew the education program was good. And uh, that being a teacher, you know, it was like solid pay or like, you know, uh, when you get like tenure and things like that, like there's a lot of advantages to being a teacher. Mm -hmm. And then uh, overall, like, I think that like choosing journalism was just being like, what am I really gonna enjoy doing more? And although, like, I think that I could enjoy teaching, like, I just don't think that it's, like, what I want to do right now. I'd yeah. rather, like, uh, if I am going to teach, like, it would probably be, like, way later in my life than now. So did you end up graduating? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. That's so funny. I, I don't think I can picture you as a teacher. Like, <laughs> no offense. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I, they, they definitely didn't take me super seriously. I'll, I'll be, like, the students, you know? Maybe so you would I'm be too, like an I'm overly chill, cool. Like yeah, that's why. Like, like you'd be I like. Pretend that. to be like on some kids' case and that stuff. Be like, like I, I would, took too I long was... in the bathroom. What are you doing? <laughs> I on. just, I don't know. Like even your, <laughs> even your drip right now. Like I don't know what brand that sweater is. It's kind of like. Oh, it's it's a little peep sweater. Oh okay, dope. Okay, shout out little peep. Uh, you know, rest in peace. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like you'd like if you you just be like those teachers like if you want to show up to my class like whatever, or like get a like you wouldn't be like a hard at I don't know. I it, it'd be interesting and be a if there was like an alternate alter, uh, alternate universe where like you were a teacher, I'd be like oh I don't know. 
but never say never. I'm a weirdo. Like I, I, I think you always like when you study English or arts or everything, you always have that moment where like, do I want to teach it? And it's like, realistically, I don't know. I could, I yeah. could never do it. Like kudos There's to There's a lot of different people. things now too that I think I could teach like other than like, you know, like a high school curriculum. Like I could yeah. also teach like video editing and also just like different things that let's say like if I, 25 years from now, let's say I was like a reporter for the last 25 years, like I could also teach like a class on reporting or whatever. So that's Definitely. also something like that's potential. true. Leaves you uh, like the door open just in case. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying. I th yeah, that's actually like there's like a pretty good kind of news writing class at Abbott. Um, I don't know if you know Tracy McKee. So she teaches it. She's kind of like she worked for CJD. Anyway, she's big in like the journalism world in like Montreal slash Ontario. But anyway, so sh she t taught that. And honestly, like pretty good class. And I would say it's like necessary for, you know, the 101 of journalism. I don't know. Yeah. I could see, I, yeah, um, sick, sick, sick. Okay, so getting in, so music is like, are you getting back into like, you know, performing on the side or like, you know, post COVID well, uh, or? I think what, just cause, uh, cause of COVID it's like hard to like plan anything. And uh, uh, let's say like booking <laughs> stuff, it's hard to like rely on people like to show up and stuff, but Mm -hmm. for the most part like we're gonna have for I hope for like sorry. I hope that this like new variant or whatever like uh you know fucks off so it's not like a big deal <laughs> like, a Omicron, like yeah. a fourth wave or whatever but uh, yeah you know, they were like um, Omicron variant I was like what the fuck is this a transformer like <laughs> yeah because like I didn't you know there's no there's like I I don't want to have to convince people to come to a show where they have to wear a mask and they have to sit down, you know? So it's like, it's, it's hip hop, you know? It's like, it's kind of like not what it is. That's not what yeah, it I is. I get that. I yeah. get that. Like even we're going to a show in like February and like at like uh, M. Tellus and they're like, yeah, like you're in sections and shit and you have to sit down and like, what the fuck, dude? Like I'm That's here to like rage. Yeah. It's like young blood. Like everyone's here to like get fucked up and like. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty like no. I don't know. It's like I don't want to sit the fuck down. <laughs> this dude like smashes yeah, his face up and like the good time. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but uh, <laughs> you can have like thousands of uh, people at the Bell Center, but everyone has to sit down at a concert. Doesn't That's doesn't yeah for sure because there's yeah. like this jam. I don't know if you know um, Turbo House. It's just like a small venue. Yeah, and, I like, love Turbo House. Yeah. It's awesome. yeah, so they do like a jam every Wednesday. Um, yeah, and like rock Wednesdays. Yeah. Whatever uh and like they're like yeah like this many max and like whatever um and like a couple of my friends go like every a couple of our friends go to like uh you know every week or every couple weeks and like they're like yeah max whatever and like wear a mask it's like but like the but the canadians obviously like the city cares about the revenue with that they're like yeah like do you like i don't yeah, fucking make know any sense. for sure no um the okay double standard in like a lot of places but we're seeing that it's just hard to like implement these health measures without being hypocritical in a way. Definitely. I mean, I don't fucking know. Like I've, <laughs> I've added him on like Instagram and like I've DM the guy, but like Francois Legault, like we make fun of him all the time on here. That's like our running <laughs> fucking you've, you've joke. DM Francois Legault? Yeah. I sent him like response? several voice, voice messages. No, he didn't. Um, <laughs> like, I don't think, I feel like everyone there was like this running trend on like Montreal TikTok that like people were sending in voice memos to oh, like really? lift the curfew yeah and, like I think he just probably got like a shit I, I don't even this dude is like fucking 80 years old like I don't he uses his Instagram no, or like not 80 but he, like whatever there's someone <laughs> who takes care of his yeah yeah media, yeah for sure, so. for sure. Yeah. um I doubt it's him yeah no I don't know he's just like it just seems like super like, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. Like, I'm not trying to be like, whatever. We don't, we're just keeping 100 on here. But like the whole, like recently with like the whole, like, well, he said it a while ago, but the like, the fact that Quebec um, doesn't have like systemic racism and all this like <laughs> bullshit, right? Yeah, um, well, recently. I mean, yeah. That's, a, that's a cold take, you know? For sure. Take. I don't know. It, it doesn't, 
it's it is what it is I guess like there's controversy in all politics but like again you know uh, on the list of things that don't make sense yeah um keep going be like, like yeah, yeah. every other day you'll take out your phone and like some crazy stuff happens and you're like jesus yeah uh, <laughs> you're like, man. yeah so in terms of like where do you see yourself i guess um in the next couple of years well to be honest right now i think um more so than anything else i'm really like honing my photography skills and okay. uh, I'm gonna apply that more so to and then anything to like uh, because I feel like I'm really getting somewhere with it and I'm progressing like pretty quickly and uh, you're just uh, you're a lot you're able to capture a lot with photographs and I think it's like an like a impactful medium for sure. So like photojournalism stuff or more just like freelance yeah. photography. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like preferably, but I still just like it's more like what it's about that is the most important thing to me what's the story about like what is yeah. the story yeah for sure um because i i feel like there's you know every not to say like every other person's trying to be a photographer yeah you yeah. know but like you know it's more i guess popular you know with social media and instagram but like i don't yeah, know I well think i mean there's like uh you know there's like uh you could have uh all the port like there's a ton of portrait photographers in montreal and stuff mm -hmm. that's not really what i'm trying to do it's yeah. more like uh, news oriented or like uh you know a lot of stuff that i just kind of capture like on my day-to-day -day life like i uh the other day i like uh, i was just hopping off the bus and i saw that there was like nine police cars outside of someone's apartment so i went mm -hmm. and like took a couple photos and because it had just been raining all the like pavement was like completely like soaking wet so like all the police car lights were like reflecting on the pavement super nicely and it was like made for like a nice photo and that was just like luck you know mm -hmm. that's the type of thing for sure so would you go to like I guess like developing our like third world countries and like do photo journalism like that sort of thing yeah but I would try to like at least be like helpful in a way instead of like trying to just do what everyone's always done and then like leave and then these people don't like nothing, nothing like helps them in their life you know I don't want to just like exploit them be like another person exploiting them so right that's yeah. fair yeah. yeah no I get that because yeah. everyone's like get the you know journalism uh journalists well, like yeah. out of my face kind of thing well it's so. it's uh it's because uh you know journalism it's a big umbrella right of people right and uh just because you work for a magazine doesn't mean you're a journalist or whatever so it's like shout out mtl blog um no <laughs> no shit it's <laughs> mtl blog yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm okay i'm okay with you guys okay <laughs> <laughs> uh no i get that for sure um that's sick though honestly um and i don't know i just feel like you're super like talented in what you do and we love to yeah. see it and we thank you so much uh for taking your time and coming on here it was my uh, pleasure it was super easy super comfortable you guys are great interviewers and uh hey. yeah. yeah thanks uh where where can the listeners and viewers find you though on social media uh, yeah on social media if you just look like if you like uh, i've found that i've tried to like you know when you try to like look yourself up and see how easy it is so basically <laughs> i found if you go on youtube and you put in thomas quinn montreal protest you'll be able to find my like youtube channel with some of my like uh, video coverage of like journalism stuff and like documentaries and like little things i've done like not long documentaries like mini docs but anyway and then uh, also on instagram you go like tq.media.mtl uh for pho my photography tq.photos.mtl and for my music if you're interested it's uh desolate existence d-e-s-o-l-a-t-e-x-i-s-t-e-n-c-e -E -E -E. wow so long <laughs> no it's all good i just we'll, <laughs> we'll link it we'll link all of your uh links in our uh description yeah. obviously because like that's how we do obviously got a you know, link everyone up. Um, 
And yeah, I also wanted to like shout out Prince Lou real quick because I know y'all are friends and he's actually mixing stuff for me right now. Oh yeah, he um, mentioned that to me oh. actually. Yeah, no, Prince is a great guy. Yeah. Uh, I uh, can't, I can't say anything like bad about him. Like uh, he's honestly like uh, since he's like randomly uh, fell into like uh, fell into my life or whatever. It's like uh, we've been like best buds and. Uh, He's been there for me. I've been there for him. And he's like a great friend and a really talented artist. So you should definitely go check it out. Prince Lou Faragama on YouTube. Yeah, I've been pronouncing that wrong this whole time. Um, my bad, dude. Uh, I was saying Faragama. Okay, totally off. But hey, whatever, it happens. Um, how did you guys meet? You were saying... You... Well, uh, yeah, he just hit me up because I put out a Kijiji ad that I was like doing uh, photos for G. Okay. and yeah, I just sent me up through KGG. I okay. bet, 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 dope. Well, yeah. And then um, I linked up with him at a metro station. That's so random. Hey, love <laughs> yeah. it though. <laughs> yeah. That's so like I've I've found roommates on Kijiji, but like never friends. Hey, you know you can find anything on the internet. You never know what'll happen. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, dude. Um. Keep it chill, homie, and thanks again, and have a great night, I guess. Have a, have a nice evening, guys. Yes, Peace. thanks for having me on the Adios. show.